So we've got some new personalized plates for the Jeep here. Jeep's also broke and the Samurai's broke. This is downtime, August, 2022. Oh. So I've done a couple of these videos before. It's usually if I just have like nothing going on to make any content for, or in this case, I've got too much going on. Work has just been crazy lately. I've been traveling around a lot and I haven't had any time to really work on anything. On top of that, Jeep's busted, Samurai's busted. So they're both in op right now, which totally sucks because we have a trail run coming up uh, next weekend. So I'm hoping to get one of these things trail worthy by then, hopefully the Jeep so we can take the kiddo too. Like I said, we've got some new personalized plates for the Wrangler and in California, it's really hard to get a plate uh, with what you want to say because there's 40 million people here and uh, pretty much everybody's already thought of every good thing to put on a plate. I have that really fun one for my GMC that says, yeah, dude, that's definitely my favorite plate ever. This one was pretty fun too. Uh, let me take it out of the package here. I'll show you what it says. I think it's like six months it takes to, to make these. So you find one that's right and how you like it. And then after you submit it, it takes them forever ever to get these things molded or stamped or whatever they call it. And then you gotta go to the DMV and pick it up. They only give you like 10 days to do that. Man, I just barely made it with these, but check this out. Yeah. I thought this would be a fun one to have on a crawler. So we're gonna throw these on the Jeep. We've got a uh, air lead mount, just like the one that we have on the Samurai. So it'll just clip onto the winch up there. And then of course the one over the gas filler on the back. So we might make some uh, mods to that gas filler one just because they're kind of hard to use. Uh, you know, at the gas station, it's it's kind of tough to pull it down and throw the nozzle in there and everything gets all twisted up and stuff. Um, so yeah, we might find a new way to do that. But yeah, that's the new plate. I think it's a fun one. And uh, hopefully we don't earn that name too quickly at least. So in one of my previous videos, I talked about how the uh, Jeep has a crushed in oil pan. That's pretty much the last thing we have at this point. Uh, you might notice we've got some inner fenders now. Still working on this. This is gonna be in an upcoming video. I had a couple of people say that they'd be interested in seeing how to make these work because these inner fenders are actually for a TJ with high fenders, not a YJ. So they don't just bolt in. You do have to modify them. Um, it's going pretty good so far. So I'll put a video together and show you guys that. But yeah, we gotta get the oil pan fixed. I have the oil pan and an oil pan gasket, but I don't know if uh, the oil pickup is gonna need to be replaced. So that might delay me a little bit too. We've also got the rear axle down there. We just did that one inch stretch, messed with the springs, the truss, all that. So we've got to bleed the brakes and then we kind of have to see how the, the rear suspension is gonna do. Uh, mostly worried about it on the road. Like I just wanna make sure it's it's safe to drive on the road like that. Got some new U-joints in there and probably we're eyeballing this thing. This is kind of a weird setup, right? Yeah, it's the same type. It's from Genrite. Uh, this is their, I forget what they call it, like extreme flare or something. This is backwards. This one is supposed to be on the other side. So it's supposed to start down there and then come up and then only go down to like right there. And that allows you to get a big tire in there and move it backwards. Of course, I can't do anything the normal way. One of the issues I have with it is if we ran it like that, it would be sitting on top of this. And this is like a quarter inch right here. So there would be like this weird gap it just wasn't sit right. I mean, that that's pretty much it, but eventually we are gonna get the uh, corner panels that go on there. When that time comes, it'll be flush with that. And I think at, at that time I'll, I'll swap them around, but you know, drilling three holes in there isn't a big deal. I'm like, yeah, whatever. So right now I'm just kind of trying to figure out where exactly we wanna make our cuts, how we wanna position this. You can see where we accidentally folded in the hub back there. And now that the tire's sitting an inch further aft, we're gonna have to make some cuts. So I'm trying to find out like how I like this to look also like where the center is going to be and and how I need to make this cut because I'm going to try to keep this cut round eventually I keep talking about it we're going to lower the jeep two inches so you can see I've kind of made some uh, lines here I'm going to try to cut this out the hard thing is like you can't just cut right here because the tub is right there and it kind of comes up at this weird angle almost follows this uh, line for the flares but cut into the tub that kind of just complicates everything so see like if I follow this line I mean it's pretty close to with the tire and this rear axle compresses because there's got a shackle in the back it's gonna move back just slightly so I, I think that's gonna work out well it does look a little bit different with the flare like here who knows maybe that'll help keep the cops off my back too since it's like kind of covering the wheel a little bit more and we got this thing on here we finally got a spare tire New concern though, is this tire rack gonna hold it on there or is this whole thing just gonna fall off on the road one day back behind the Jeep? 38 by 1350 on the 17 inch wheel. 
It's got our beads in there. We've got 10 ounces of airsoft BBs in there to help balance it out. Yeah, you know, we kind of need to make some mods to this eventually. Like there's a little bit of wiggle room right here. So I kind of want to just put like a little spacer in there. It keeps it from rocking back and forth. It's kind of hard to replicate right now, but it definitely does. And then you can see that these wheels are six on five and a half, but this pattern right here is for a five, five and a half, I believe. So this works. It actually does hold it down. It doesn't want to come out so that's cool but you know we, we need to redrill that and put a new plate on here and you know it might be kind of cool to put the license plate there instead of right there because this is what i was talking about earlier it's hard to hold this down and then like you put the gas pump in there and it wants to come back up and everything's you know just don't care for that style so it might be kind of cool to have one right here maybe a third brake light so like i said the samurai is down too we had a super fun time on a signal peak night run with one of the clubs i'm in and uh we were in the lead and i was like you guys want to try this harder route you know going up a steep hill a couple people haven't done the trail before um i didn't think anybody was really like expecting to do that figured i was gonna try it again just because you know some stuff has changed on the samurai since i did it last time it was super sketchy last time because short wheelbase going up very steep hill with some ledges it, it is sketchy and uh, yeah it was extremely sketchy for all of us there's another samurai behind me we were like had straps on them holding them down it's fun but it's definitely sketchy well anyways we were um i was having a hard time holding the samurai in one spot i kept just wanting to roll back i'm like i don't know what's going on with this thing but finally i just launched it if you can imagine the 1.3 uh being able to do that i kind of let the clutch out fast and gave it some gas and we just shot right up the obstacle and i got up and i was like sweet as we're running down to spot the next guy they say dude you're leaking some oil or something out and i look in my 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 driver's rear uh drum back here is just covered and uh i and some fluid i didn't know what was going on um i thought man hopefully i didn't you know blow this this gang violence out here but I was, I was hoping you know i i didn't blow the seal out um what it ended up being was the wheel cylinder something's messed up on it so it just let all my brake fluid out so we had decided to do the rest of the trail without any brakes which totally sucked going uphill it's not a big problem um a couple sketchy spots for us though going downhill we had to tether ourselves to the samurai behind us and that was very sketchy for them we were trying to go nice and slow down all the obstacles and stuff but you can only go as slow as it would in first gear plus the parking brake whatever that would do i would kind of just roll down it fast and the poor guy behind me i would just yank him down the whole obstacle but we had a good time first like real kind of break on the trail for the samurai we haven't really had a lot of issues with it it was nice to see we could do the whole trail still end up spending the night out there at uh, eagle lakes staging area I forget what it's called out there, but it was really nice. First time I've ever camped out there. Yeah, I'd love to do it again. The other guys camped two nights. I was like, man, I wish we had the time to do that, but we, we just had a lot going on. So yeah, we got to get that wheel cylinder fixed. Um, I need to add another leaf into the front. The front's just too soft right now. Um, we've got my switch panel for some reason isn't working. Um, like only the square lights on my windshield right here are working, but my light bar and my rock lights stopped working halfway through the night, which is lame. And then we're still having some overheating issues. Like even signal peak at night, we were having trouble with it, it's crazy. So uh, we got a new radiator. We got a nice aluminum radiator, throw that in there. We got all new hoses and stuff. So hopefully that's gonna do it. Other than that, I don't really know what to do. Maybe take the um, fan clutch out and just do one of the fixed ones or maybe go electric. I don't know but we got to do something there's no reason this thing should be overheating like that yeah we we got to get that stuff fixed pretty soon though because we're going to moab uh, next month so end of september it's gonna be my first time going to moab and you know are we gonna take the jeep or the samurai pretty much whichever one's ready um, whatever one is working the best at the time that's what we're gonna take honestly i'm i'm pretty nervous about it um because my rigs aren't very low center of gravity both of them are are high up with lots of ground clearance and perfect for the rocks out here in my area but moab is like really off camber a lot of ledges you know so i'm short wheelbase and a little bit higher than i should be on both the vehicles so yeah I, i'm a little bit nervous to see how they're gonna do out there but also really excited but we're coming down to crunch time we really gotta get one of these going i keep talking about it i keep talking about lowering and stretching the jeep and i keep saying i'm going to build some toyota axles for this well i finally started getting the parts for the toyota axles um, i'm just not going to tear this apart or put any more money into the current setup until the jeep is ready to go so one of them's got to be operational and then um, probably towards the end of the year we're gonna get all those black friday sales and really get the parts we need and we're gonna tear this thing apart we're gonna move the front's gonna get stretched about five inches i'm hoping i can leave this fender on there because i like the samurai look but we might just have to take the fenders off um i don't know yet 
but the back's gonna get stretched 10 inches. So we're gonna do a little bit of a comp cut back there. The goal is to be able to put the top and the doors back on. I don't wanna have, I don't wanna have it be like really cold. We go do our snow runs and stuff. Like I wanna be able to seal it up. Nice oil spots down there. I don't know what that's about. But uh, yeah, we're gonna do Toyotas and 40s. So it's gonna be pretty big. It'll be nice to have some gearing in the axles that I can trust because I, I'm too scared to go lower in the Samurai ones. I feel like I'm just gonna go through ring and pinion like crazy. So yeah, I haven't started tearing the axles down yet because I keep hoping maybe one day I'll find like a Dana 70 rear that's 35 spine, you know, like the good one. And then a Chevy Dana 60 front and just go like true one tons on this because they have a ring and pinion gear ratio that goes down to 717, which is sick. So you know, I could get more gearing for the Samurai because that's what I need. The, this engine is just so weak. When you get tires that big, there's almost only so much gearing you can get in the axles before, you know, especially a Toyota 8-inch before they just like start shredding every time you go out. And yeah, the Toyota ones are, you know, like 250 for the ring and pinion, but the ring and pinion on the, the Dana 7060, dude, they're like 500, over $500, almost $600 for that 717 gear set. So the Dana 60, uh, it's a war zone out here. The Dana 60 uh, alone is like $2,000 if you can even find one. So Toyotas are definitely a cheaper way to go. And I could probably keep it a little bit more narrow. So it could be, um, you know, a little bit friendlier on the trail because once you go one ton, you have to go over all the big rocks and stuff and, you know, can kind of mess up your lines. But either way is cool. But we're getting down to the wire here where I think we're just going to have to go all in on these Toyota axles. I'm starting to get to that point in my life where I, I'm willing to pay people to do things. Normally, I would never want to do just because I don't have the time. I've got the money, but not the time right now well i guess i really don't have the money either so it's just bad all around but anyways that's pretty much it for this video um just stay tuned you know there's always stuff coming out i got parts piling up in the garage i just need the time off to go and work on it and we got a lot of trail runs coming up a lot of cool mods for the trucks so stay tuned don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one